That was the clam juice. That was. But you get you <laughs> gagged, right? Oh yeah. I thought I was going to projectile on my laptop. I hate to break the fishing news up your M check, but I'd like to speak about the ice hockey. Congratulations. You're one of the 13 listeners of the real life podcast. We just traded a migraine in for like an orgasm. You might want to mark that down. Yeah. Yep. 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 All of my projects are on schedule until they're not. A member of the Nation Network of Podcasts. About as funny as we're going to get uh. today. It is hockey season and we have an episode of the real life podcast to do. Been a while since we've said that. Welcome to episode 247. I'm Tyler Uremchuk. Bag Milk's here. Wanye's here. Jay's here. Chalmers. He might be here. He said he would be. Um, we did start the podcast a little bit earlier than when we told them we would, so I'm sure Chalmers will show up at some point. Uh, we got a lot of hockey to talk about here. We're also going to talk about, I believe, clam juice, which is, uh, which is interesting, and uh, a ton of other stuff. But first off, I'll start with you, Wanye. How good did it feel to be nervously watching the Oilers and be stressed out from hockey again? The best, man. The best. All my old beef. Like, all the players that are new. So many new people to learn. Cuckoo. Cahoon. Who the hell are these people? It's great. I'm cuckoo for keeping Chris Russell out of the lineup. Oh, there you go. Uh, are you after last night? No, I actually want Chris Russell back in the yeah, lineup. But exactly. I, did, I did really like Slater Cuckoo. I thought he had a good game. I- I mistook Barry for Turris. <laughs> the laughs in 2021. Cuckoo is very interesting because he was a very high draft pick, and you can see you can see glimpses of it. Like he thinks the game very smart, and like he's got like a offensive uh, angle to it. Like he, he he's a smart player. Skates well. Skates well. Yep. We got to make like a uh, a meme of a cuckoo clock cuckooing. As part of his like Gretzky slide, should he ever decide to score a snipe, yeah, when he scores, yeah, fair enough. Uh, Mr. Bag Milk, you were back betting on the NHL. Uh, did you have some fun? Uh, I'm going to answer the question, but I don't want to talk about it. Okay, because Operation Bet with Your Heart did not go well for me last hey, night. Hey, really season does. opener, season opener, all cards off the table. Always yeah. bet with your heart. The season opener, that's okay. Jay, Just- I had, I had a. Bet on Connor points. Mm-hmm. Didn't get it. Nope. I had a I had a parlay that was hinging on a dry sidle goal. He hit the post. Mm-hmm. I had Oilers on the money line. I had Oilers winning the first period. It was just uh, it was a comedy of errors in my betting Blood career bath. last night. It was just it was not great. It was That's not okay. great. It's okay. It's okay, man. It is okay. <laughs> Thankfully, <laughs> I've got a chance tonight to win it all back. Exactly. As of because of yesterday, I, I I bet aggressively with my heart. I made some big bets. Same, just like you, Oilers, uh, uh, McDavid uh, over one and a half points. I also like I was convinced Oilers were winning the game, so I parlayed it with the over. Mm. I should have done everything <laughs> separately. I was yeah. right on the over, um, but Oilers couldn't pull it off. And I I I bet my whole, I bet all of my bankroll yesterday. So I have had to make a deposit today. I'm shrinking my unit size and I'm going back to like precision cuts. You don't trust the Oilers to just win it all back tonight for you? No, I'm betting betting on the Oilers, but I'm not parlaying it with anything. I'm also betting on the Oilers. Uh, So I've got, I've got separate bets. So hopefully I, I'm, I've built a portfolio of bets and hopefully I finish up on the day and then roll it in and then work back to building up my unit size. For me, it was just it, for me. The game was it, it was there for the Oilers to take. They were just so yeah. sloppy. It, I yeah. said it a million times on Twitter. I said it in the wrap up. It, it was a pre. It looked just like a preseason game. Yeah, they couldn't make six foot passes. They were going for cross icers. They was just they were trying to force things through. It was just it was sloppy. So I, I to me, one of the interesting things was how reverse zero to 60 that people went in terms of one loss. Oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. We're back, boys. We're back. No kidding. Like, people were, people are already just thinking it's over. Like, just skip the season. We're done. It's dead. And I, I, I don't get that. Like, it's, again, it's been one game. And I know it's a 56-game season, and every game's a four-point game and all that. But wow. Every it, game's a four-point game. Hey, everybody? What's if, better than oh. four games in the last 300 days? A lot. It's still better. It yeah. might no, be time to bring in back, No, no, no. I fucking, I support these two. We're back in season mode. We're back in, like, we live and die with this team. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I am fucking. But they just die and die with the team. Game. 
There's yeah, no it's live. Out. It's dying. It's the one the set I'm talking about. It, there's no living. It's just always being fucked. In there. Like I feel like tonight is a must win. Like, like I feel like it, it, it. Like we have to win that game. We have to win tonight. I'm you, betting, and we have you, to win. I think they will win because listen, I don't. I don't think the Canucks played like world beaters no. by any means last night. They no, just, no, no. We gave it what, to them. Holtby gave them an extra couple of saves. Oilers hit a couple of posts. A couple of turnovers don't go that way. Like on one of the goals, uh, on Besser's first goal, when Yamamoto and Dreisaitl couldn't get it, that extra six inches out past the, the blue line. It was like a comedy of errors. The first goal, Nuge, Nuge, where the fuck were you on that one, buddy? Larson yeah. goes for a hit when there's no defenseman back. Like, it was just, it was have you ever seen? Have you ever seen a grimmer pre-game ceremony? Then the double memoriam. Yeah, that was... Then they throw to the cancer ad right off the hop for the ad staff. That, that like, was. Do uh... you have cancer? I'm like, I'm already having a tough day. Yeah, it was. Uh, they, I will say though, I, I loved the touch uh, with the Joey yep. Moss jerseys yep. in warm up. I thought that was great. That I did a great job. Sick. Like that looks like a really well done documentary. Yeah, I think they did a good. great job. You can and, uh... the, and, and and then also the parlay. Uh, into the national anthem. That was like they did a really yeah. good job. There you know what I of... love about sorry. You know what I love about the Joey Moss story, and I can't wait to see this documentary. I love that he's from a family of entertainers, right? Yeah. Because he was so outgoing, right? And he loved singing, and he loved dancing, he loved performing. It's so interesting that he comes from a family of performance because I think a lot of times, unfortunately, if you have somebody with a challenge like that, you don't necessarily get too into seeing like what their personality is and what drives them, right? But it makes total sense that Joey Moss is from a family of performers because he was a performer. Uh, if, cool. you don't know where, if you don't know where we're talking about right now, anything for Joey is airing tonight. That is Thursday uh, at 6.30 on Sportsnet. Um, yeah. He's like from like the Von Trapp family singers of his day. Like, yeah. yeah. You, can, uh, you can bash the Oilers for a lot of things, but the way that they honor their own is incredible. They've always yeah. done a great job of that. And this is just the start of ways they're going to honor Joey as well. Um, today's podcast brought to you by Oodle Noodle, where a portion of in-store and curbside pickup proceeds go towards a local charity, over $100,000 raised, and they are not done yet. Oodle Noodle loves Edmonton, and me personally, I also love Oodle Noodle, and I know a lot of people do as well. 14 locations in Edmonton. Shout uh, out to Oodle Noodle. Could you, uh, put in the markers there and just make that the new Oodle Noodle ad? Yeah, that'd, that'd be, be great. 1260, please. That'd be perfect. Was good indus- a, good industry good buzz terms there. Just put in the marker. I like where you're yeah, at. Yeah, yeah. Just mark that up and uh, yeah. ship it to the uh, air uh, traffic controller uh, at the station. And uh, move it over to the, post. Uh, move it over yeah. to post. The guys in post, please. Maybe add a maybe maybe add a stinger in there somewhere. Ooh. Oh yeah, a little bit of stinger. Yeah, got to get a stinger in there if there's time. Got to take out the noise pollution in the background too. That's my big one with the podcast. A lot of noise pollution. I got to edit out. Gotta scrub you it. You want to know what I want it. You want to know what I want to edit out, Tyler? You ignoring our tweets about the firmness of our erections during an Oilers game. Yeah. I, when, I am, when there are home games now, I am a professional. I am at the rink. I can't be making boner jokes on my Twitter. <laughs> but there, was, bro, there were just numbers. Yeah, there were just numbers. There were just numbers, bro. So unless, you listen, unless you listen to this podcast, you don't know why I was rocking yeah. a strong eight after the Yamamoto goal. No, oh, I yeah. feel like that's not as good of code as you guys think it is. <laughs> it's an undecipherable code. It is Please do not talk about Twitter. I'm so sad. It, it is. Was, it is. It is more. It is. It is more secure than crypto. Yeah. So you can't there's get into your in. Twitter. I can't get in then. So here's my situation. When the ON account got deleted or whatever it was, right? Mm-hmm. I'm not saying it's involved. I'm just saying at the same time, when I try to log in now to Twitter, I can log in, but then it says, "Please confirm your email address." And I have tried three different email addresses. And the confirmation emails never arrived. Hmm. And I went on Google, as one does, to try and troubleshoot things. I don't think I'm an idiot. And they're just like, oh, if that happens to you, just give them a new email address and then send it there. And I'm like, yeah, you don't think I would have thought it already, you fucking idiot? Of course, I wasn't talking to anyone in particular, so I was just crazy. Fair enough. But not being able to talk because there's a sleeping baby next to you and not being able to tweet because you're locked out. Has anybody else been locked out of Twitter lately? I know how he feels, except I'm not a turnip. Start a new account. What? He's got like 10,000 followers. Start? Yeah, man. Shit. That's my fucking Moby Dick. All the things well, I've ever written are there. 
Clearly, you're not getting into it. Well, I'm going to shove somebody out of the way and take over the Oilers' nation one and get sweet and ruin bag milk's life. Uh, that would actually make my life easier. Yeah. Would it? <laughs> yeah, it would just be one less thing to do. Oh, buddy, I can be the Oilers' nation Twitter account. L- what year did I hand it off to you? It was the lockout year. Woo! Prior lockout to you year. doing Twitter properly, I don't even know what I tweeted. Like, fucking codes for Miley Cyrus chat rooms and shit. Yeah, it was, and there was a lot of just auto posting articles, and that was all that went up on it for. Yeah, a long that's all. Time. That's all that it was for the longest time. Um, oh, sometimes I would go on there and be sassy, but long, like 2010 type shit. I'm excited to bring this to the podcast, and uh, again to to humble brag a little Structure? bit. I get to I get to go. <laughs> I'm at the games. I'm at the rink. I'll be there for most home games this year. Humble um, brag. Humble brag. Uh, it's it's a lot of fun, but I have observations that I'm not sure if you get on the broadcast. How weird was it being in there, dude? Yeah, it's weird. And so if you guys don't know, there was a bit of a COVID issue within the media. A couple media members tested positive during training camp. Can so, I guess who they are? I, you can, but I'm not allowed to tell you. <laughs> yeah, well, I can guess who they are, though, right? I, sure. is, well, okay, okay, we'll do a code, like the numerical code no one can crack. Does one guy's name ride with Gene Principe? Was he on the broadcast last night? No, he well, was they, not. So they, here's here's what I'll they say. They talked about it on the broadcast though, last night. Well, there's an obvious one. Isn't, isn't, wasn't Jack Michael supposed to call the game? No, last night was a national broadcast. Jack's ah. only doing regional TV. So I, 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 Hey, I was pumped to see Harner Ryan on yeah. that. Yeah, he did an he awesome did. job. He did an awesome yeah. job. I, I mean, Hunter. Gregor tweeted that he wasn't there. Um. So basically what happened, there was, a, there was a couple COVID positives out of the Oilers media that were at training camp. So... If you went to Oilers training camp, you had to go to Rogers yesterday in the morning and get a COVID test, and you were only allowed to go cover the game if your test came back negative before game time. So that's, that's why like, they should let us all into the arena, and then we can all go watch. So that's why, like, Gregor wasn't at the game yesterday. There was basically no media there outside of the broadcast crew because none of the tests really came back in time. But since myself and my coworker, Matt Iwanek, since we didn't go to training camp at all, we were there. Nice. So it was like me, Matt, and Quinn Phillips, and none other, no other media were there. So it was even what emptier than it usually would be. Um, imagine you showed yourself, sorry to interrupt, but imagine you showed yourself a video this time last year yeah. of you covering that game. No media, no fans, and you and Quinn Phillips high fiving. I would, li- if you would have a year ago today, maybe I shouldn't say a year ago, 14 months ago today, if you, if you showed me my life at that game and been like, What's going on? I honestly probably would have guessed a war, like a major I, war. I remember <laughs> yeah. when the fans were war. here, and I was like, I don't know if you should be going to games, man. You were like, what? People aren't going to be going to games? Well, may I present Exhibit B. <laughs> <laughs> that was the Germans, but yes. Yeah, true. Um, so basically the way it oh, works. Okay. No, 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 no. You're out of the <laughs> arena. We're out of the arena of your professional time. Yeah, yeah. Give us your number on the Yamamoto goal. Oh, yeah. Ah. Uh, Ten. You worked Whoa, hard. you're on deck. I'm trying to think. I'd say on an excitement level, you know, seven and a half out of ten. It's ah. disturbing looking at your face while you're putting your number in yeah. play. <laughs> you're looking at <laughs> the horizon and you're comparing on your spectrum. I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> anyway, Please. continue on. Uh, so basically the way it works is you walk in the arena. <laughs> there's a first table. You need to get like you use the little temperature gun and you get your temperature taken. You got to fill out a form being like, I have no symptoms, I'll sign it. And then you walk up to another table where you again need to take the temperature gun and get your temperature, fill out the form again. Then when you get to the loge level, which is where we're all sitting, there's just tables everywhere and everyone gets their own table. So I walked around. I I walked like almost a whole lap around the loge level. And I was like, God damn it, there's no sheet with my name on it because they forgot to put one out for me. So I just had to go sit in an empty table. One of three surviving members of the media, they they, didn't put a sign out? They couldn't remember. (laughs) Devil. Yeah, I know. This Man, and you had prime choice of bathrooms last night. Yep, definitely prime choice of bathrooms. Uh, The Oilers also bought us a meal, which was very nice. So I had smoked. Is it a Bobby Nick burger? End of days. Uh, smoked Gouda and brisket mac and cheese. I just went and looked at the menu oh, and I said, I'm going to get the most nice. expensive thing. Wow. They just said, order what you want. Yeah, it's on them for the season. Hey, word to the wise, just a little secret loge move here. Get the meatballs if it's the loge okay. menu. Uh, I, it's not as expensive as your truffle mac and cheese. But those meatballs, I don't know what they put in them, but for $900, it was worth every penny. Uh, so anyways, warm ups are cool and all that. And uh, here are my three things I took away from the game. First off, can you guys tell on the broadcast how terrible the pumped-in crowd noise is? 
Yeah, oh, of course. No, oh, I, I think yeah, it's okay. I could. I found it. I mean, I found it. There were moments last night where I actually laughed out loud because something was happening, and then the crowd noise came in, probably just a second or two delayed from when exactly. it should have. And it just it just kind of made me laugh. There'll be like a slight bump on the boards, and the crowd will be like, "Whoa!" But like three seconds after the slight bump, you'll be like, "What the hell is going on right now?" Um, also, in the first period, there was a play where Archibald and Turris collided, and then the whistle went. And the puck kind of went off to the side. And Yesapul Yarvi went to go pick up the puck. And he toe-picked and slid face first into the boards. Like oh, he, yeah. He I did just, not see that. He just totally ate shit and smoked himself into the boards. And for a second, I'm like, oh, my God, is he going to get up? Because he, he can just so hear hard. you laughing from Lowe's is the only <laughs> noise he can hear. And so, asked, like, when you're in there, when you're one of 60 people in the arena, yeah. can you hear what there's, what's going on on the ice or is... Yes and no. You can pick up a bit, but they pump in the crowd noise, so it's not, like, super clear. But the other thing, when McDavid smoked Quinn Hughes at the end, yes. oh, he I got, love that. there were about seven or eight fuck yous. And, like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, what are you thinking kind of shit as he went back to the bench? They were yeah, he pissed. set the tone for the next game. He, they were pissed like off, Captain. and Cassian was standing up on the bench, like, drawing back a little bit at them as well. Um, but the Canucks were fucking pissed. When McDavid hit Hughes, and I, I wonder if that's something to watch heading into tonight. Good. They were super, Perfect. super mad. So the Canucks are not going to. Is ready. The Canucks aren't going to do shit about it. No, I don't think so. But what's the intensity dampener a prick tonight? We'll see. What's the intensity dampening field like in there? Is it like a practice? Is it like training camp? Like what? Is it so cavernous? that you can't believe that it's an NHL game because it looks like a scrimmage? What's the situation? Yeah, like, it is. there definitely isn't a lot of atmosphere in there, and especially last night, it really just felt like I was watching, like, a scrimmage or a preseason game. Uh, but when the players scored, like, they still get pretty fired up. Like, there were some big celebrations when Hoglander scored. The Canucks bench just went, like, absolutely bananas as well. Uh, so I, I think as the year goes on and they get more comfortable in front of no fans... I think the intensity will start to pick up in these games and, and we'll start to get, it'll start to look and feel a little bit more like normal in there as normal as it can feel with literally no one there. I mean, it's, I, th- I think that's going to happen also just the fact that they're going to play the same teams over yeah. and over and over and over again. Yeah. I mean, Do they put mannequins in line for the toilets to pee at intermission. Do they roll those up? Still have to wait. Got to wait for this. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 very authentic experience. Line. God. I still think they should go full Home Alone style and just have like some robotic people moving around in the concourse. Yes. And, you yeah. know? I agree. Yeah, I mean... A little like, flat bag milk in the stand. I don't, exactly. I'm not, a, I'm not a big fan of like the flat fan thing. I think it's kind of just like overdone now. I, I don't mind just putting up the tarps and having the tarps fill there. Um, I will say the Oilers have done some different things with their Jumbotron presentation. So when you're sitting now, and I'm assuming they'll keep this when you're in the stands... They have little trackers up that tell you how long each player's been on the ice. So, like when McDavid hops on, if he's played 16 minutes, a little thing comes up and it says McDavid 16, and then it'll start cool. counting up. So, like Thank you can you. always get the realistic like how long they've been on the ice that game. Uh, also, oh, yeah. the scoreboard doesn't just have shots on goal now; it also has giveaways, takeaways, and there's one other thing on there. Oh, adding some fancies up on there. Yeah, Perfect. they're trying to add some fancies. What about um, uh, the DJ, Johnny Infamous? Does he still have like all the lights and stuff flashing around his little perch? He's not up on the perch. He's back up in the booth where the media used to sit. So he's in like a little control room. Um, so yeah, Johnny Infamous is up there. But I will say this, the music is a lot better than it is with fans in. Like we got Ooh. a well, bunch of Travis Scott last night, I heard. Oh, yeah. um, like a lot of heavy hip hop. It was really, really well done. Johnny Infamous is doing a good uh, job. And I requested I Super, or Trooper and I got Trooper. I didn't. Okay, can you? Since you have his ear, can yeah. you pass something along? Sure. There was one, not one DMX come on, yeah. and we need we need that to rally the boys, especially okay. when there's no fans in the stand. And uh, you, you know what? Maybe not all the time, like used to be the case, but I I need a little Cotton Eye Joe thrown in there. Don't even yeah, get like, started. Let's not forget where we came. Exactly. Yeah. Let's not forget where we came from. No, exactly. It's our roots. How the hell did you request a song? Uh, Johnny Infamous on his Instagram will be like, "Hey, what do you want to hear tonight?" And I'll, and then you just have to message him and be like, "I want this song." And I said, "I want a Trooper, raise a Which little hell, raise uh, okay. a little." <laughs> oh, that's a classic Oilers <laughs> jam. Oh, yeah, yeah, I love <laughs> that. They're like coming right up. Yeah, the Oilers are <laughs> like, "Here we go!" And then for. Besser scores, and you're like, "Fuck me!" 
It would have been great if they still did things like the make some noise stuff and then the fake crowd got louder and louder. That did, was, yeah. Did you guys see the the operator in Colorado yesterday? Yeah, playing solitaire. <laughs> he was playing solitaire on the ice from his laptop. <laughs> I like that. Oh, you guys get, you so know hard. what? Embrace the weirdness, man. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I think Jespo should be doing t-shirt tosses at his house. Why not? Is Jespo coming back, you think? Yeah, yeah I think he would. His, his deal was, I think, separate with the Oilers from from his deal. Yeah, with you never know, though. Yeah. They want to piss off their rights holder, and they mm-hmm. want the other Ched person on the stage. No, I'm pretty there. sure. I'm pretty sure he's he's like he's still there. They should have him at home doing t-shirt tosses, and just then, whipping a t-shirt against the wall. Yeah, and then they just mail it out to whatever. Like we can make a check of that out, <laughs> or like you know, just drive around the city and drop them off for people. So like you'll be watching the game, and it's like t-shirt toss, and your doorbell rings. You're like, holy shit, I caught a shirt. You like around town, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I will say so. The Oilers scored their first goal, and you're not you're not allowed to cheer in the press box, right? You're professional. You're not a fan. One guy in the press box, I didn't know who it was, but someone cheered, and I just heard Yamamoto yeah, scored, and I just heard like a loud clap. It was like, yeah, and I like turned. Around, who did that? <laughs> who cheered? Um, that we was broke funny. The code. They broke the code on cheering, but you're gonna pretend like you didn't know what we were talking about with our numbers. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, oh, turn your back on social. Turn um, your back on the entire community. For me, I'm good at not cheering. Like, I'll just sit there quietly. But my trigger, I, I can't. S- <laughs> no, when I watch at home, I, I cheer pretty hard. When I'm at the games and stands, I cheer hard. Um, but I, my trigger is too many men penalties. If the Canucks are even a little bit too many men, I was like, too many. And then I'd be like, oh, shit, got to be quiet. Got to be quiet. I don't know why. That's yeah, my trigger. I imagine you seeing a goal of a sport and a team you like and you're have, and you're just like, flat mouth and you just close your laptop and leave and you're like how was the game you're like excellent jolly good it was fine and i also I, imagine you've watched <laughs> sports like this since you were like six i've had an adequate time tonight i feel like your career <laughs> caught up to your approach to watching sports before it just made no sense as you were taking fastidious notes and preparing post-game summaries that were never written when i, was I enjoyed kid, that tremendously when i was a kid i liked intermission panels just as much as the game i loved oh, intermission Lord. panels i loved a good intermission panel as a kid talking about like, I train see those and going stuff. To, yeah going to school in the morning be like nah, actually they were incorrect when they said blah that's, that's um the see, that's kid, how i know i could never be a media guy tyler because last night by the first intermission i had to have the old i had to have a couple of glasses of water because you know, <laughs> 8 p.m start the wait was extended uh, yeah, um, they had like Molson ads all over the rink and I'm like, why can't we just like, you know, there's no one here. Let's wheel out a case of beers. Like, let's have a good time. I know we're a bunch of you guys are working. I'm just kind of sitting there enjoying the game. But like, come on, let's loosen up a little. It's a pandemic. But no, I don't think I'm going to be able to order a beer while I'm there. But it's a good time. Worth a try. Yeah. Such a strange, you could live to be a hundred and you'll never see anything like this ever again. You're like, I'll never like, yeah. And that's why I'm going to go as much as I can this year. Cause like, I mean, I'm going to be able to be like, yeah, I was at an Oilers game with no one there. Like, it you, is, it's What weird. if you just tweeted an out of context, just a number yeah. while you're there? Yes. Like just six, and that's the tweet. But he was eight, he said. That was me. I was just, a firm eight. Just for you guys and the real life podcast, I'll do it tonight at some point. I'm All not right. going to tell you when, but I'm just going to mix one in. Yeah, Can you, one can you cross post it on Insta so I can see? I'll <laughs> screenshot it and just send it to you. No, why don't you best. One, you want to you want to run OM's Twitter tonight? <laughs> it's gonna be trustworthy enough. I, I think I could. I think people would love it. I think people would love it too. Yeah, I would. Has it been deleted and restored, or is it still monumental? Yeah, it's uh, forty-seven thousand something. Like oh that. fuck! It's gonna drain my battery. All the retweets. What would be the rules if I ran it? What can I say? What can't I say? Uh, don't get us sued. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> no talking. Know. None of that James Neal stuff, Wanye. Hey, somebody messaged me. You see the little drawing I did on Insta? No. I took a photo of James Neal and drew a baby hovering over his shoulder like the Great Kazoo. <laughs> and I bet you, no exaggeration, 20 people DM that listen to this show, which puts us over our 13 limit. Yeah. And they're like, I understand this joke. You're going to go to jail. Stop saying James Neal's having a kid. I'm like, I didn't say he's had a kid. I just said it'd be great <laughs> if he had a kid, which is a lie. Had, Tiso, that that post you put up your M Chuck it solved every question I had. Mm-hmm. I, uh, well done. I had someone with the last name Cuckoo follow me on Instagram, so I'm worried oh. I'm gonna. I need to only say nice things about Slater Cuckoo, or else his family's gonna. Whoa! Hate me. How, how can't you? 
We, and also, like, I naturally just want to say good things about him because, one, I like local players, and, two, he had a good game yesterday. It's a good story. Yeah, like, it's, <laughs> he should be praised right now. He, his stock value right now is high. Thank you, Uncle Ken. But anyways, this person follows me on Instagram, and now I feel like my whole ability to analyze Cuckoo is just... It's cuckoo. I, I can't get it. Cause now <laughs> I I'm see like, what you did there. Am I just saying he's good because I don't want to disappoint his family? Am, is he actually good? I, I Stay just don't true know. to yourself, man. <laughs> Stay true to yourself. Anyways, shut if, it to, if, the if, to the audience. If cuckoo gives you a seven, you tweet it. Mm. Yeah. I'll tell you, when little Yambo on one knee did that little snipey snipe, I was a two-digit man. He's relentless. Wow. He's oh, fun to watch. He, he created that whole, his tenacity is insane. We got to think of the accurate nickname for him because that guy just, I, I, I don't know who it was. It was either Myers or Edler. He took like a 15 stride run yeah, at him through all like 120 pounds that he could at this guy. I'm like, yes, like this kid comes to compete. Yeah, man. He wants to win. The ice. He fights for his space and yep. he can, and he can score. Like, I don't know. He's like we got. He's we not got scared of anything. There. He's not scared of anything or anybody either. Like that's a fearless dude. Yeah, he's got he's he's got a set of moose nuts, as Jordan Tutu would say. That was a great mm. line from Jordan Tutu. Um, yeah, man, Yamamoto's quickly becoming like a fan favorite if he isn't already. But like, I want him here for a long time, and that's exactly yeah. the type of player that that Oilers fans and Oilers Nation just absolutely falls in love with. Yeah, he's on my jersey radar now. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, my jersey, I, if, if I get the retro jersey, I think I was gonna go McDavid. I might go Yamo. That's fair. Are you gonna get a game worn children small? Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's real, real life, yeah, real life size. Uh, what did you guys think of Pulio Yarvi last night? Uh, good, to, good to see him again. You know what? Uh, I think he's fine. He, he, he looked way more sturdy out there. Like, didn't have like the Bambi, like kind of loose legs. Yeah. Uh, except for, I guess you saw him toe pick and yeah. go face first to the boards. Didn't see that. Uh, he had that great back check on Hughes. That was great. Like, yep. Yeah, it was a back check. Like, like he showed that he's got the wheels. Um, I, I think he played pretty good. He, I saw a little bit of nerves here and there with some decisions that he made, but like that is to be expected. So I was, I was, he, he, Pooley Harvey was not the problem last night. I'll put it that way. Yeah. I was not even a problem he, last night. I mean, I think it was just the game one of the year and no preseason. Oh, there's a lot of problems. Sloppy. We made so many bad, like, like bad mistakes. Like, just like these are professional hockey players. They don't do this. Okay. I'll and, reframe the question. Do you, you, we just agree that you have to give it a few games before you start analyzing it? The world isn't over. Like, parts no, of no, the world isn't game. over, but the Oilers gave that game to Vancouver. Oh, yeah. What I would say is that, and that's fucking annoying. Yep. Yeah. The first month of the season is a general gong show anyway. And add in the fact that they didn't have a preseason to work out any kinks or knock the rust off was just like, if you got, like, as an example, if you had mid-season McDavid as opposed to first game since August McDavid, he would have had, what, three, four points last night? So, yeah, he, yeah. he doesn't get that many chances and not score. And, like, Dreisaitl in the first period had a chance. Pass from behind the net, goes to Dreisaitl in front. Hope he's looking the wrong way. And Drysaddle mm-hmm. just couldn't bury it. In the second period, he has that drive, goes wide, cuts across the crease, has a wide open net, just has to tuck it in, tucks it right onto the post, just sits on the post. So it's like, you know, Drysaddle and McDavid, with the amount of looks they got last game, they're not being held off the oh, goal. Yeah. Like, they're not being out of the goal column with, with those kind of looks again. So that's why I'm optimistic heading into tonight. And I agree with Wanye. Like, I'm not going to hit the panic button until they're one and four kind of thing, right? Like, if they start that bad, then it's like, Oh boy, you're three games under 500. Like you got to pick up the pace here. But if they're 0 and 2 even tonight, I'm not going to sit here and be freaking out that they're not going to make the playoffs. I think you got to give it a bit of a sample size here. And here's where I'll, I'll 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 be a little bit optimistic. Everyone keeps saying, "Oh, if you fall down early in this North Division with only playing your division, it's going to be impossible to come back." I would argue that no, that's it's, not true. Not true. It's yeah. even, every game's four points. It's easier to come back from a bad start. Mm-hmm. If you're six points back of Winnipeg for the final playoff spot in whenever, and you play them three times in a row, that's a chance you don't get in normal years. Yeah, you're always a heater a heater away from putting yourself back in it. Yeah, like if, if 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 they could string together a seven, like if a team string together a seven game win streak, that's probably gonna if in there and they're in the basement, that would probably move them into a, a playoff spot automatically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
I think, you're, you're, I think that's exactly it. Yeah. yeah no, what do you think, uh, you think of Kosky? He wasn't a problem, but again, it was it to was me that problem. game last night just looked so much like a game from the bubble where I did I never thought Miko Koskinen was a problem in the return to play, but every game you went, ah, if you could have got one more save from Miko. You wanted yeah. one more save. And last night again, it wasn't his fault. He was hung out to dry on multiple goals. But you look at that and you go, ah, one more save from Miko. But it was like it, it, it's like we coughed up some high danger chances, and the unfortunate thing is, is they scored on like every single one of them, and that's where you're like, damn it, I just wish you could have just saved us one of those. Yeah, with like the, the best- Besser goal, that one kind of upset me. I was like, yeah. ah, like they worked them high glove. They worked them high glove. It was like Vancouver scored on those chances where the Oilers didn't. Exactly. Yeah. It. One team buried, yeah. one team didn't. Another ah. disturbing thing of the night was how well-spoken Matthew Kachuk was honoring the healthcare workers at the beginning of the game. You can tell. I was so, like, remember when they? Holy shit! This motherfucker is well-spoken, and it's my dirty little secret that I'm in love with him. Oh, okay. I am, I also had a dirty honestly, little secret. Honestly, I think that I'm in love with Matthew Kachuk. Bold. That is a bold take. I don't know what to do about it. I feel very, very dirty. I'm not even wired that way if you catch my drift. Plus, he's a flame. But he's very, uh, what's the word? I mean, Yamamoto is, is hell on wheels. Matthew Kachuk is super hell on wheels. He, I, I, I see the angle of he's the perfect example of you love him if he's on your team, you hate him because he's not kind of thing. What if I told you I would love him if he's on the flames? Oh, boy. I imagine this clip is going to go well. Well, you, you know what? <laughs> 31 I don't feel good about it. Markers, don't Markers. feel good about it. Might want to get some posts on that. Oh, I also have a confession. I found myself agreeing with Kevin Bieksa way too much last yeah. night. I think he's I a really good really analyst. weird about it. He, he wrote a lot of jokes over the summer, you can tell. Yeah. He had he a good... Pissed. He pissed me off, though, when he said the only way the Oilers can win is if McDavid gets two points every night. Because that was... That, but, well, but to... Hey, last night McDavid didn't get any points, and it wasn't because of his lack of offense that we lost the game. So hold on, he we said, scored three for the goals. Oilers we, to win. McDavid needs two points every game, and you're proving him wrong by saying Connor got no points and we lost. <laughs> no, but we didn't lose because Connor didn't get two points last night. Is what I'm saying. We well, lost we because. But if if we would, yes, points, we would have tied won, the though. game. Yeah. But if our <laughs> secondary scoring is getting three goals, we should be over the fucking moon. And we should be trying to find a way to be still in that game. But no, we gave up the opportunities to Vancouver. Like, just gave them up. Like, like crazy, awesome, unreal chances. Like the, that so, oh. the Bo Horvat goal, the first one of the night, he had Indeed. enough time and space to make a fucking sandwich. Oh, yeah. oh God. I, uh, I said it earlier today. The Oilers were playing a COVID-friendly game on Brock Besser. They didn't want to get within six oh, feet nice. of him, right? Well done. Chalmers, what's That's up? A- Oh, what's up? How long have you guys been doing this for? Since three? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, around there. Oh, I totally forgot. Sorry, boys. What did you think of sorry, the game yes. last night? You worried? You hitting the panic button? You think the Oilers might pick first overall? <laughs> uh, no, not. I watched. So it's funny because I watched the Montreal Toronto game before, and I was like weirdly into it. Um, more up, I had money on it, but more so, like I just was so happy to have hockey back. And oh, yeah. So I was kind of watching the teams and. And I was seeing what kind of game they were playing. And then I watched the Oilers, and it kind of, right off the bat, looked a lot like the beginning of last year. Just out of sync, no no sort of rhythm, nothing happening, no system in place. And I, uh, and I was a little, I was like, oh boy, I hope they figure this out. First game, no big deal, new faces. And, um, and then when I saw Larson go for that big hit, and I saw that play open up, it felt like I was playing NHL 2020, and I knew... I was there 2021, and I just knew we were going to get scored on. And, of course, we did. And then it was just little breakdowns like that. So, no, I'm not panicking. I think that uh, – I think I saw a lot. Like, the very first shift of Pugliarvi made me feel really good for him and, and like, glad to have him back and kind of made me forget about the year of bullshit he put us through. So that made me kind of happy. And then just to watch him, like, really invested. Like, he created a turnover uh, – going through the, the their their end he was kind of back checking created a turnover which turned into a scoring chance and i said to my son i'm like that's the that's the hardest I've, that's the best thing i've seen so far in this game from an oiler standpoint you know well, what we I mean? were texting we were texting about it a little bit in our real life group chat last night and it was just they were they were sloppy 
They were trying to force things through that yeah. weren't there instead of taking the higher probability looks and passes, and they were foregoing chances on net. They were foregoing shots and tighten that shit up, and it's a different game. John, a lot of, yeah, a lot of rough. I like yeah. I like what you said about Puljujarvi too. I think there was a certain level of effort there. I thought he looked stumbly at times, but for a guy who it's not just his first game back in the NHL, first game back on North American sized ice, I think there are reasons to uh, there are a lot of positives to pull from that game from JP. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, tons. There's a lot of positives to pull in, in total. It was it was breakdown where you know as somebody as all of us that watch hockey and everybody that listens that watches hockey when the breakdown happened. You went, you went, we're going to pay for this. And we did. You know what I mean? Every time. Every, sing, every single time. Yeah, and every time. like when, when Dry Seidel and Yamamoto both blow that pot, pot to get it out, you just go just a little harder. And so that my thing is, if they come out tonight looking like that, I'll be a lot more worried. I expect them to come out tonight like on fire. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, so it'll be, it'll be interesting to see how they react to it being less, you know, less than 24 hours away from, their last game and same exact team. It's going to be, and I realized this and somebody said like on the, on the beat cast last night, every game is a four point game. It's, I was like this, they don't understand that if there's still two point games in because every game is a four point game, but I get what they mean in the division that are these guys going to be able to keep up with 56? What are going to feel like playoff fucking games? Well, every team's in that boat. I know, but that's what I mean. Like, is the hockey yeah. halfway through the season going to look? Is, are we going to hit like an apex at some point, and then the hockey is going to start to go down? Here's here's when my, I have a heart attack and die. Here's what I'll say: exactly, is exactly by that point, there will be playoff lives on the line and so much to play for that they'll get rejuvenated. I, I just think that when yeah. the stakes get that high and it gets that intense, we won't see a drop off because there'll be so much on the line. My prediction mm, is this fair. off season for them. It's going to be one like no other. There's going to be more relaxing right off the bat, more partying. Hopefully by then they like restrictions or they can actually enjoy their lives. Right. Cause they're going to have played what's going to feel like, it's not going to feel like two full seasons. I get that, but they're going to have played a season. Then this new season, which is going to be, you know, heightened intensity for every game. And when they get to this off season, it's going to be something else, but I don't know. Yeah. Like, I mean, uh, like, when we were talking about uh, the, the the thing that you said, Beg Milk, on the um, text thread was, gosh, remind me what we what you said when we were texting back and forth because I couldn't I couldn't have agreed with you more at that point <laughs> when you texted it, and now I can't remember what it was. Was uh, it that you were also upset that Tyler was ignoring the firmness of our erections? <laughs> no, that was not it. Uh, no, it was the forcing passes. It was the forcing passes across the front of the net constantly and where by about midway through the half or three quarters of the way through the first period, um, Vancouver had just been getting more quality shots with pucks from further out. And we were not doing that. We were trying to force it to the front, trying to get that, you know, but I'm not, but other than that, like, honestly, I just loved watching it. I think that like, that was just a get to know guys game. Cal- Cahoon looked really good. The new guys, um, they looked good. Cahoon was um, great. Yeah, that's what. That's a plus. Someone I Barry to was to awesome, man. Barry was on the awesome. point in the power play. I swear he's gonna he's gonna do amazing this year. Yeah, Barry was awesome on the point. Um, Yamamoto, couple hard cross checks in front of the net, like you Good know, penalties, his presence being felt for how small he was. Those were big penalties. Uh, I kind of I knew somebody was gonna say in the B cast about that Puliarvi. Basically, along the lines of something like Puli Arby had a really good game, but then they were going to bring up that penalty late. That penalty was not that bad. I mean, sure, it wasn't he's got a, a penalty. Long stick. It, it, he he re- grabbed the stick. It, yeah, it's true. And and, and, and Puli Arby only had one hand on it. It didn't really, it didn't really affect it. But I knew some jackass was going to bring that up and try to taint <laughs> what was like pretty much a good game from Puli Arby all the way around. You know what I mean? I yeah. just uh, also I want to thank everybody that jumped into the first beat, first beat cast last night because there was there was a lot of chatter in round one. Uh, when do you start them again? Just just let everyone know how long after the game. I uh, depend right as soon as I post the wrap up. So I'm going to say just ballpark twenty minutes. Okay, fifteen twenty minutes. But last night was the first time that I had to do something other than beat. Camper Dave made a donation to the Edmonton Food Bank, so he 
got me to do a shot of uh, clam juice. <laughs> oi, oi, oi. I don't and, get it. I, I got a call. I, I don't know. I, you heard, you saw my messages, Beg Milk. For a hundred bucks, you should have drank in that whole goddamn bottle. It was like a tiny <laughs> yeah, thank bottle. you, Chalmers. But thank he gave you. me he gave me a uh, like a grocery list of stuff to buy. So it was not just a hundred dollars for then, only clam juice. Oh, oh, so I thought for a hundred bucks they got to pick one beet cat. No, he he sent me a list of stuff to buy. Oh, so, oh, okay. so he's got about, well, about think, four items in there. I'm not gonna buy I think I think, I think you I think you gotta open it up to more people. He made a donation and you've got to drink a bottle of clam juice and then you've got a bunch of other people who made a donation, so they gotta pick something gross for you to eat. I personally wouldn't drink a bottle of clam juice for a hundred dollars. So I don't blame Listen, you for not doing it. I almost projectile vomited all over I'm my not. table just from a shot of it. The consistency mm. was gross. I knew as soon as I smelt it it was gonna be awful. And I would mm. argue it was the worst thing I've had in my mouth in probably ever. That's what she said. Thanks, everybody. Uh, well, I was God. sitting there trying. I'm, I'm sitting there. I was about to start sending you. Man, just start sipping the damn thing. We're here to see. We're here to watch you drink some clam juice. So drink some <laughs> clam juice. And that, <laughs> but you where's the clam waiting. juice? You just kept us waiting. And then you could hardly even finish the damn thing. What a show. Because you were, like, choking. <laughs> yeah, if you want to hear, if you want to hear the moment after I drank the shot of clam juice, uh, Meme Lord Surveyor Brett clipped it. It's on it's on Instagram right now. Excellent. You can hear me Excellent. gag, not able to speak. Here. I honestly thought I was going to throw up. Uh, throw that on the uh, real life IG. Man. Uh, is it on the is it on the Oilers Nation Instagram? No, it's on my yeah. Instagram right oh, now. The, I'll send you the clip, Tyler. The, the one other thing I really quality content. Here we the go. The one thing I really loved about the Bcast too was. You got an I love you at the end. Did you see that? Ooh. From who? Surveyor Mark, Brett. T. Yeah, Mark wrote, Brett. I love you. I love you too, too. He said, he said, I'm so glad to have you back. Love you. <laughs> I was Here. like, eh? respect. This is an I love you guy. Every, every group needs <laughs> a love you Community of love. Respect. <laughs> the community Here. of love. Here's the sound of bag noise. Uh, oh, it is. Uh, Holy. Uh, oh. uh, I can see by your face you're watching it, but I can't hear it. Oh, you yeah, can't, I can't hear anything. Oh, you guys can't hear it. Okay, that's my bad. I thought it would uh, work. It didn't work. There's, no. there's, there's, there's two players I want to talk about. And Chalmers touched on Cahoon. I, when that guy finds his scoring chances, like it, yeah. it, it I think he's going to be good. But the other thing is, is like I think he's so like he's got some oh. weird kindred oh. connection to the oh. dry side. Oh. oh, okay, we can hear it now. <laughs> Who's playing it? <laughs> <laughs> it was not good, man. I'm, I'm rating things to you. I give it a four out of ninety three. Oh well, it's good. better than one, I guess. Yeah. Well, right. I just because looking at my grocery list of things that I have to buy. First of all, I need help crowdsourcing some of this stuff. I don't even know what things are. Um, but I, I gave it a four out of ninety three because I got a feeling there's going to be something worse. Well, fair. Got to leave room. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, uh. You so it, it make you, you eat. To. Sorry, it make you eat and drink uh, non poisonous, gross shit to raise money for the food bank. And how much have Some you raised? Are, so far, it is six hundred bucks. bucks. Uh, I had a goal of a thousand dollars, a modest goal of a thousand dollars for the season. It's already at six hundred. Uh, there's a couple of people that have DM me already, so I'm going to be kissing a thousand here right away. Uh, Good once for you, people man. Send Good job. Screenshots, but um, some people are being nice. Like on my grocery list here, I've got a can of beefaroni that I got to go buy. Ooh. I'm just going to enjoy that because it's delicious. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that sounds like that's for a win. No, that's yeah. nice. I what about like a urinal mint? Would you eat a urinal mint? Ah, okay. That's poisonous. Uh, you've got yeah, to be poisonous. I see. Yeah. I see. I see. Yeah. So non poisonous, eh? Call yourself an Oilers fan? Fine. <laughs> Think of the pages if I drop dead on Instagram Live. Aren't there guys on YouTube eating like deodorant cakes and shit? Those people are <laughs> well, dead. Probably, Most yeah. of them aren't. Most, Most of them, them are. Most of those guys don't die. Oh, if you want to get in on it, make a donation to the Edmonton Food Bank. Send me a screenshot and a grocery list, and I will pick up the stuff and I will do it. You got to flip this jackass style, and you got to get like your viewers to do dumb shit and send it to you. Well, actually, um, one faithful nation citizen. I'm going to pull this up just so I don't fuck it up. Uh, Alan Kramer. He is going to donate in just because I'm doing this for the Edmonton Food Bank. He's going to g- donate ten bucks for every point Ryan Nugent Hopkins gets this season to the. What a great wow. guy! Oh, bless, sir. That is great. wow. That is great. Ali Kramer is salt of the earth. 
I was say, if you really love the Oilers, you'll do that for Connor points. Mm. <laughs> well, I was also, like, I mean, I was reading about it, and the Edmonton Food Bank stretches out every dollar a lot. So the more money we can raise for them just by doing something silly like this, I'd be, I'm pretty excited about it. I might donate some money, and then I want you to eat, like, a whole thing of maraschino cherries. I just want to reward Ooh. you, though. Oh, that'd be nice. Yeah, that'd be I'll great. Go, that, off the top of my head, oh. it'd be a little uh, sugar. Start, that would be good. I think, yeah, yeah I, I think it, it doesn't end that well. So, <laughs> they are, to take it back to hockey, you were going to talk about Cahoon, but were you also going to talk about Turris and how awful he was? He wasn't uh, no, awful. Well, I, 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 he was I, right I, I'm, I'm giving him a pass. But yeah, no, Cahoon, I find because of his connection, like he looks up to Drysaddle like a big brother, he feels compelled to pass it to him all the time. And so, <laughs> yeah. I, I, there, was, there was a couple times I'm like, you didn't need to do that. Like, I get it's Leon, but, like, probably just I also, continue on. I also felt the same way about Nuge with, uh, with Connor. Hey, David. Yeah, yeah I, I was going to say, I had a bigger problem with Nuge and Cassian. Uh, just, uh, Nuge and Cassian, I don't even think they knew each other were on the ice. They just got the puck and were yeah. like, where's Connor? And that's a function of no preseason game. So I'm, I'm, here, I'm, I'm here for it. But who really fucking pissed me off last night outside of Adam Larson? Chase on. He's got oh, a yeah. bury. Yeah, he's, dude, he's, you've yeah. got to bury that one on the power play, and then that pass he couldn't receive. So right on the no, tape but the one on for that's the thing. A one toucher. What do you mean? The one on the thing? power play. The one on the power play that he didn't that he tried to turn and shoot. That's a pass to dry cycle. He was not, there, not man. To turn, that's not the play. To turn and shoot. But it wasn't. A, it's not the turn and shoot I'm talking about. Oh. No, oh, because I was talking about the. I was thinking about the turn and shoot. I didn't like that because I was like, Dreisaitl's there, exactly where he's supposed to be. That's always been a play to him. He turns, backhand passes it across the crease to Dreisaitl, who's always open there, and was. And he mm-hmm. turned and tried to, like, turn and shoot forehand. There was one, I don't know, I don't think well, it was the turn and shoot, but there was one where he was right in the key, yeah. if you will, and he just yeah. duffed it. Yeah, that's that's the one. So there is, so there, there is out of all of that, there is there is almost a high certainty of two goals should have come out of that. All those, all those things. Again, I'm just like, fuck. Like, you know, we created an amazing opportunity. And like, if that was, you know, even Cassian, that's probably in the net, you know. And I'm just like, ah. So, anyway. I think what broke my heart the most about last night was I had a three-team parlay. And me winning it, all based on the Oilers winning last night. Yeah, I, had a, one, uh, I had one. I had one, too, that was... Should be. I had one too that was hanging on a dry saddle goal that I messed on. It's so cool. oh, and he almost had that one where he put it right off the post. Like he had the he had the goaltender oh, yeah. beat both and McDavid too on the backhand. Like yeah. he normally scores there. Oh man, uh, there's a lot to look forward to. I'm not. I don't want to. I don't want to come off and sound like I'm being totally uh, negative about the whole situation because I'm I'm not. Something, um, but something yeah. interesting to keep an eye on. Oilers just announced some roster moves. Uh, Evan Bouchard down to the taxi squad. Tyler Benson is going down to Bakersfield. And Stuart Skinner has been recalled for tonight's game. Interesting. They're, so they're ca- saying they're- it's an emergency basis. So, so what, Cos- 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 got hurt? Koskinen got hurt. Is Smith okay? Like, I mean, if it's, I'm assuming right now that if Stuart Skinner is getting recalled, it's because one of the two goalies can't go. That's my assumption. Or is, it Neil, is it Neil and Smith? Was Neil actually on the COVID uh, restriction list? Yeah. We can't say. He was. Okay. So if he was, I, aren't him and uh, Smith really good friends? Do you think maybe Smith is a close contact? No, because Neil's been practicing with the team. I, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. They're, I think Players Neil's, get tested daily, don't they? Yeah, they get tested daily. Um, so Neil was on the COVID list, but he's been skating with the team. I think it's... Uh, I, I think it's just like sort of one of the weird rules in this whole thing. Like he might have traveled in late or something like that. I don't know. On that <laughs> note, I'm going to wrap up the Oilers talk uh, quickly here. We're going to get to our friend Scott Hay- Or Sorry, we aren't going to get to our friend Scott Hastings in a second. I will explain that in two shakes. First, let's give some love to our friends at Twig and Berries who want to give some love to you with their new Getting Lucky threesome. It's only 50 bucks right now up on the site. It comes with a red pair of their nutsack underwear. A red nutsack underwear, long sleeve as well. It's a very nice shirt. And uh, some socks on top of that. You can use the promo code NATION15. Get 15% off. All that and more at our friends. Twigginberries.ca. The ODR gear. I love plugging that because it is absolutely beautiful as well. I got a message yesterday from my sister, who is a lovely person. 
mm-hmm. who always supports everything JR and I do, a beautiful message yesterday asking me to go to St. Albert if I if I was going to be there because she made a big order at Twig and Berries. Nice. Oh, that's nice. I love it. Did she yeah, use the promo code? Support. Oh, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Let's get to our and betting talk that, here. Let's get to our betting talk because okay. we need to wrap up this podcast right away. Uh, it's a game what's day. happened with Scott Hastings? So, Scott Hastings, um, do you want the real answer or the answer he told me to say on the podcast? Fake the one, real, fake one, both. The fake one is he said, Jay said he's going to fade him and he needed more time to think of his picks. Uh, uh, I did say that. I publicly said that on Twitter. Uh, he had something come up last minute here. Uh, so, But he gave us his picks for tonight. So we got tons oh, of Scott Hastings it. stuff to get to. All courtesy of our friends of at oddshark.com. Uh, make the sharper pick with Odd Shark. If you've never even placed a bet before, you can also go there and they have other uh, top sports books. So, I mean, you can use Betway, Bodog, whatever it is. They have a nice list there. You can use a trusted site. And uh, for hockey, I mean, you go. They have their Shark Bites under the NHL page, which is some quick numbers. Give you everything you need. They got their predicted score. They tell you where the public is betting as well. All that good stuff at oddshark.com. Uh, for hockey, Scott Hastings has some picks. He uh, he says his new favorite prop over on the shot total for Austin Matthews, and apparently it was three and a half in that first game. So that feels like an absolute lock. And uh, tonight he's saying Columbus over Nashville. And for uh, the weekend, he's saying Rangers over the Islanders. And uh, the over in Toronto, Ottawa. So uh, those are Scott's NHL picks. Uh, Bag milk, you got smoked betting on hockey, though, hey? Well, like I, I said, too, the so. old uh, bet on bet with your heart approach in game one. I you're put, allowed. Game one, you're allowed. It, it was heavy betting, and it was not going well for me. So. Heavy betting. Yes, heavy petting and heavy betting. <laughs> <laughs> those are the two things that I love the most. Yeah. Um, I've got Oilers on the money line tonight. Yeah, I've got that. Connor at over a point and a half because you got he's going to be pissed. That's, that is that Take is that. the lock. That is the lock of the day. Connor is. We got a mad captain over one and a half. All day. <laughs> guys, I also guys bet. Always think that these guys have to get mad in order to do what they're good at. <laughs> oh, he's so uh, mad. He's yeah. going to kill everybody, man. Mad and he gets <laughs> yeah, five points like, like that. Connor's going off tonight. Fuck it. But I also bet on Oilers winning the first period, though I am now nervous about whatever this goalie news. Don't get too granular. Just focus. We're a little bit gun shy after yesterday, bag milk. Focus on the big kind of things you feel really good about, and don't get too deep tonight. Okay, I got a question. Normally, in a back to back like this, they would start Smith. They would start at the backup after starting Koskinen Mm -hmm. last night, right? Yeah. Was Smith expected to start? Is that who they expected? Is on like yeah. Tippett alluded to it in his presser. They would go Koskinen back to back to start the year. Okay, but if okay, but if let's just say that Smith is the one that has the problem, are you seriously telling me that they would put in Stuart Skinner over Koskinen? No, nah, they'd probably, probably go back not. to Miko so, there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, Big um, so, Milk, I think you're fine. I also like my pregame podcast bet of the game, which is zero and one to start the year. Classic. Uh, I got McDavid <laughs> over three and a half shots. Hashtag nice. fade your arms. Now, oh yeah. Wait. He, he didn't have three shots last night? No, no, no. Last night I had McDavid over one and a half <laughs> points. Tonight I'm saying McDavid over three and a half shots. Oh. Is my better yeah, game? Yeah, shot. Um, okay, like we it. only have like five minutes left here in the we pod. We have to do football. I know, so that's what I'm saying. Let's go. Last week we did not do good. Scott Hastings only went one for three. He had New Orleans. He nailed them on the spread, but he missed on Tennessee and the under in the Buffalo game. Um, wait, no, he nailed that Buffalo one. It was, it was at 51 and he had under 51 and a half. So Scott actually went two for three. Us as a podcast, the only one who guys pick right was Jay. Oh, baby. Um, I'm, I'm going to bet really bad, yeah. for my pick this week. I'm betting with my heart. Buffalo minus two and a half. You got to do it. Love my bills. Let's go. Got it. Playoffs, man. Yep. Got to go with the heart. I also actually think they're going to cover that spread. I think they'll shut down Lamar good enough. And I think they're just simply a better team. Did you hear what Lamar said today? He doesn't like playing in the cold. He doesn't like. He doesn't want to play in the snow. Never played in the snow from Florida. Fumble, man. And then, uh, and then I heard, you will uh, never I heard, make the CFL with that attitude, sir. No, I heard a guy say yep. the funniest thing: snow football is like Fight Club. You don't talk about everybody. Nobody likes playing in the snow, but you don't tell anybody about it. No, I don't exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, okay. Who's up? Uh, you can go, Chalmers. What's up? You had Tennessee plus three last I'm, week. You missed. I'm 
I'm just awful. I'm just literally awful. So I'm throwing darts right now. I think that the Green Bay Packers are going to kill the Rams. I can see that. So I'm going the Packers minus seven. I like it. Bag milk? Uh, the Oilers are back, so I stopped caring about football. I don't even know who's playing. Can I bet on the Chiefs. <laughs> Chiefs playing. Yeah, 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 I bet on the Chiefs. Minus, Chiefs minus 10 versus the Browns. Take it. All right. Book yep. it. Jay, you betting with Take your heart? It. I am fading the shit out of bag milk. Cleveland plus 10. My uh, my dear friend OBJ posts on Instagram. Oh my he doesn't God. say, I think we will win that, this game. He says, I think they will win this game. Such a team guy. <laughs> Cleveland plus 10 all day. Let's go, Fucking baby. OBJ. Uh, here's Scott's picks. He's going under 45 and a half in LA Green Bay, over 50 in Buffalo, Baltimore in the snow game. And he's taking KC minus 10. Yeah, fade yeah. that. He's big on fade fading Jay right now. He told me that. Yeah. Uh, so there you go. There's your real life locks of the week brought to you by our friends at Odd Shark. Whether it's football, whether it's basketball, or if it's the NHL, which I suspect it is for a lot of you, they have all the info you need to become a better, better Odd Shark. Dot com. All right, Oilers Canucks tonight. Score prediction, anyone? Four two Oilers. Five two Oilers. I was just gonna say five two Oilers. All right, empty net. I- my my score prediction on the pregame pregame show starring Josh Park and myself is four four two over and suck at Vancouver. Wanye, you got a score exactly. prediction? I don't know if he's still here. Ten nothing. I'm still here. I'm bored right. out of my mind. All this gambling talk. I don't even know what sport we were talking about. Ten I-O-I, nothing. What was that? Ten nothing. Ten nothing. Oilers. Sure. Look for me on Oilers Nation Twitter. Let's do You're it. You're not All allowed right. to incite violence. You're not allowed to say political shit. I should probably have us banned by about the first power. <laughs> all right enjoy the game tonight everyone crush a nation beer or two while you're at it uh let's go oilers this has been episode 247 of the real life podcast brought to you by oodle noodle and twig and berries we'll be back on monday great job on making it through the entire hour of the real life podcast don't forget to like and subscribe wherever you get your podcast from